Wyatt Ott, and today I'll be leading, leading group three. Uh, we're talking about the next experiment, which would be the um, power armory. So uh, just some object objectives and main goals we're going to be trying to accomplish here. We're trying to understand uh, what the bomb calorimeter is, uh, you know, the procedures behind it, uh, analysis of a little bit of principles, you know, what's going on inside of it. Uh, other things we're trying to determine, we're going to be trying to, to, to determine the thermal capacitance of the system, which would be our calorimeter. Uh, other thing we want to uh, calculate is the change in temperature of the samples that we're testing. So uh, first off, what is a POM calorimeter? Uh, just like any standard calorimeter, uh, it's going to be measuring the heat of combustion of, of, of chemical reaction, which would be our fuel samples. Uh, the only difference in the bomb calorimeter is it's able to measure uh, higher pressure, it's able to withstand higher pressures. Uh, basically, we're placing a small uh, miniature bomb inside of it. Uh, it's also used in testing uh, quality, purity, uh, testing fuels, uh, pollutants, waste, stuff like that. A uh, great example of this would be uh, roughly 10 years ago, uh, I think they started removing uh, high amounts of sulfur from diesel fuels. Uh, basically, whenever an uh, exhaust system on a vehicle or a factory, uh, basically this removed the soot, uh, the black smoke coming out from it. Uh, only issue with that is, is pretty much what that did was uh, produce uh, mission failures for vehicles later on down the road, so they had to come up with a new solution to that. Uh, just a little bit of background of the equations we're going to be using here. Uh, mainly the first law of thermo is going to be applied. Uh, you have the sample heat of combustion, which is equal to the thermal capacitance times the change in temperature. Uh, for this experiment, we're mainly going to be uh, using, uh, we're going to say that the inside of our calorimeter is going to be our control volume. So in that case, we, if you have the fuel is known, we can find the thermal capacitance. And if the fuel is unknown, we will be finding the heat of combustion of that. So uh, just proper safety that's going to be required, uh, appropriate dress, uh, long pants, closed toe shoes, uh, wear your safety glasses at all times, uh, never operate anything, equipment without TA or professor's permission, uh, no horseplay, uh, no flight and high go seek inside the lab, and use common sense and when in doubt, always ask TA. So uh, just a little bit of an apparatus we're going to be using here. We've got the thermal couple, which is going to be reading our temperature, the change in temperature, which will be connected to our computer. Uh, the stir motor, which is going to be in charge of distributing uh, the heat throughout the water so we get a proper reading from the temperature. It's not going to be just sitting in one area. Uh, then we have the wires connected to the ignition source, and we have the water, water bucket, and we have the stainless steel <coughs> bomb, which can be spread out right here. Uh, 1A shows the inlet check valve, and on the other side of that, 1B would be the pressure lead valve. And uh, connecting right here would be the two electrodes, which is holding our uh, fuel sample to the crucible. And we have the 9, 10 centimeters of nichrome wire, which would be here only touching the sample. And uh, we also have the lid locking ring, which would just be keeping this in place. So uh, just a little bit of procedure we're going to be going through here. We're going to measure uh, roughly one gram of benzoic acid. Uh, then we're going to cut 10 centimeters of the nine chrome wire. Uh, make sure it's only touching the fuel sample. We don't want to touch anything else to get an inaccurate reading. We're going to purge the bomb, then we're going to pressurize the bomb to roughly uh, 30 atmospheres. Uh, for the water jacket, we're just going to add roughly uh, two, kilo two kilograms of water to it at around uh, room temperature, plus or minus five degrees. Uh, then we're going to lower that into the calorimeter. Uh, for the instrument, we're just going to pull up this, uh, this file name on the computer. We're going to insert the thermocouple. Uh, to verify it's properly functioning, we just probably put it in your hand, grab it, uh, verify the temperature, change it from the heat of your hand. And the procedure right here. So we're, gonna, we're assembling it. We're going to lower the bomb into the water. We're going to connect the lead, uh, electrical leads to the thermals. We're going to position the calorimeter lid with the stir and thermocouple attached to it. Uh, for the experiment, we're going to record the two frame temperature right before the ignition of the fuel. And then when we go to ignite the fuel, we're going to read the temperature for seven minutes until it, the temperature remains in equilibrium. Uh, then we're going to stop whenever the temperature has re uh, reached equilibrium, and we're going to save all the data. Uh, just a simple shutdown procedure. We're going to turn everything off. Uh, we're going to depressurize the bomb. We're going to measure the uh, remaining burnt, unburned wire that's left, and then we're just going to clean up everything. Uh, these same steps can be applied for the unknown fuel sample as well. So uh, this is just a little schematic showing what's going to happen here. So whenever we ignite the fuel uh, from the ignition, we have the, the, 
their water, the water's third motor going. Uh, you see the temp temperature rising on the thermocouple. It's going to start at T1, which would be zero, and it's going to rise up to a temperature of T2, and that's going to be our equilibrium point. So uh, just some expected results we're expected to get here. Uh, whenever we're measuring our time to find the thermal capacitance, we're going to take into account the two kilograms of water and the three kilograms of stainless steel. So we can do that by saying that the thermal capacitance of water, uh, we found out it's equal to roughly 8.4 kilojoules per Kelvin. Uh, same with steel. This is based off of steel, uh, stainless steel 304, I believe it is. And uh, we'll find that to be roughly 1.5 kilojoules per Kelvin. And then you can get the total uh, total thermal capacitance of the system we found roughly to be 9.9 kilojoules per Kelvin. So next we're trying to find a change in temperature of this system. So uh, we can do that uh, by basically using the formula that we uh, introduced earlier, which was uh, E combustion is equal to thermal capacitance times change in temperature. So we can set the heat combustion of the calorometer is equal to the heat of combustion of the benzoic acid. Uh, we can maneuver some form of some uh, thing around, and we plan on that change in temperature was equal to roughly 2.673 degrees Kelvin. Any questions? Um, let's see. What's the purpose of the purging? Yeah, uh, the question was what was the purpose of purging? I'm uh, pretty sure uh, you don't want to to set up a bomb or the bomb that we're using. Uh, you don't want, there's no unwanted uh, pressure in it. Uh, there's maybe 10 atmospheres of pressure in it. And you go to add 30 atmospheres. Uh, I don't want to say it explodes, but that might happen just to get any unwanted uh, air particles out of it pretty much. Any other questions? Thank you.